Alien Romulus is finally in theaters this week, which means we have a brand new installment in the Alien franchise to rank from worst to best, which that's what we're going to be doing today is ranking all the Alien movies from worst to best. There are nine films to talk about, and let me just say right now, I have been scared shitless to do this ranking for you guys, mostly because my Alien opinions are very wide and vast. And I already know that because as I was re-watching them all this entire week, I put out a tweet and it said, Some days I think Alien Covenant and Prometheus are the best Alien film. And right then and there, I probably just lost some of you. <laughs> I'm in danger! Am I still feeling that today? I don't know. I went back and did a lot of rewatches. Like some of these films I watched twice in the same week. Um, but my opinions are some hot takes. Just understand that. If you disagree with me, I get it. I am brand new to the Alien franchise. I did not grow up with the Alien franchise. I did not perceive this film. I didn't see the original one or Aliens until about a decade ago. And when I did, I, I, I liked them to even love them. And every time I've rewatched them, I've liked them even more. To the point where I would say my top five in here I absolutely love. So, keep that in mind. It is time to start this ranking. Please leave your thoughts down below, hit that like and subscribe button, and let's get into this. And kicking this list off at my number nine is Alien vs. Predator Requiem, or however the hell you say it. So, this movie, I have hated since day one of seeing it. And I still hate it to today. I'm sure there is a fun, schlocky action film in here. But sadly, you can't see what the fuck is going on. <laughs> I, I mean, genuinely, you cannot see anything that is going on in terms of action. So the action that you come to this movie for is lacking. And a sequel to a film that was overall fine. It was fun for what it was. It didn't change the world. But... You have these great ideas. You have these two iconic creatures that should be fighting one another, and you should be able to see what's going on. But you can't, which makes Requiem literally one of the worst blockbusters ever made, and also just probably one of the worst movies ever made. I don't have a lot of thoughts on this one because genuinely none of the story interests me, none of the characters interest me, and I can't see anyone fighting. This is probably, again, one of the worst films I've ever seen. Jumps me into my number eight, and that is Alien Resurrection. And something about Alien Resurrection, like, almost on a guilty pleasure level makes me like it more than the one on the next list. But then in everything else in its entirety, it also makes me just not ever want to rewatch this movie. And I think a lot of that just goes to how weak the movie is. The fact that the the bullshit excuse of how they bring back Ridley just doesn't really jive for me. The entire third act in here really doesn't really work either. And honestly, a lot of this just feels like a Matrix. Like the Matrix is a cool thing around this time. So let's make Alien Resurrection kind of like the Matrix. Especially with like the whole gang and crew in here that is like kind of coming about with like the guns strapped to the guy's hands. Like some cool stylistic moments, but just overall like lacks any of the energy of what an alien film should be. Like that's my whole thing is that the movie comes off goofy when it really shouldn't be. And I feel like what they tried doing here was like Alien 3 was kind of an approach to strip back and take us back to the days of Alien to make the Xenomorph a little bit more scary. Did it work? I don't know. You'll see my ranking. And then Alien 4 was like, wait, let, let's kind of tone that back. We can keep some of the horror elements, but let's go back to Aliens. It seems like that's what a lot of people wanted to do. And it just, it never felt like th anyone knew what they actually wanted to do with this film. For me, that was the biggest detriment of this film was the fact that it just didn't know what it wanted to be. And I think a lot of this franchise has been that specifically for fans of a whole and what they are looking for in their alien movie. Some people love the mythology and the world building. Some people like the weird fucked up shit like when <laughs> Alien Resurrection. Some people love the action. Some people love the horror. This movie did not know what it wanted to be, and none of it was executed in a great way. We get to my next spot, and that is Alien 3. As I said earlier, this movie, you know, I kind of hinted at it. It doesn't really work either. And I think for me, it kind of sucks because this movie sets up a great concept. A space prison in the Alien franchise with David Fincher directing. 
Now, David Fincher very little directed this movie, mostly because the studio wanted to take over. So we're not going to blame David Fincher on anything in here. But the Alien franchise itself on a space prison, this is my second time watching this movie, and it's just more boring than I remember. The space prison aspect is like one of the coolest things. And I don't mind like the whole alien approach and some of the psychological natures of it. And specifically, even some like the iconic scenes in here, even speaking about iconic scenes, like iconic shots, specifically the xenomorph getting right into Ridley's face was just so intense. Where the film loses so much of me is the fact that it's uninspired, it's boring, and it has very lazy dialogue that makes me just not care about anything going on. Again, the film tries to go back to some of the older pacing of Alien in terms of building up to the xenomorphs and building up to the facehuggers. But after the events of Aliens, you would expect for this film to kind of take it off into a stronger department. But again, with a weak script and a lot of different mixed ideas, it just never fully feels fleshed out there. And specifically, the thing that I think really fucks this movie up is the fact that they killed off Newt and killed off Hicks off screen. Why? Specifically with them surviving aliens, it feels like they should have been a bigger part into the next adventure of Alien, and Alien 3 just strips all that away and just goes, nope, we're gonna forget all about them, we're gonna kill them off screen, and we're gonna go forward. Brings me down to my number six, and that is Alien vs. Predator, a schlocky, fun movie that you can throw on and enjoy for what it is. It is not deep, dark cinema. It isn't even the closest to some of the best in the Alien franchise. But it is one that I watch, and anytime the humans are on there, I don't really care what's going on. But anytime I see Predator versus Alien, I'm having a good damn time at the movies. But if you told me you hated it, I'd get it. If you told me you loved this movie, I'd get it. If you told me that you found it to just be a stupid good time, I would agree with you because that that's how I feel. And for me, the, a lot of that comes from the fact that I am a massive Predator fan. That was the franchise I grew up with was all of those movies. And like the fact that like we get them fighting the alien, I always think is like a cool thing, specifically from that callback from Predator 2. So Alien versus Predator, not very memorable, not like some memorable action scenes. But I think a lot of the stuff with the Predator and the Alien, and specifically like even some of the mythology that again is very much not canon, specifically after seeing Prometheus and Covenant, which I don't care. I like the explanation more in those. It was fun as like a what if version of the Alien versus Predator world and everything of that nature. Would I want one in the future? Sure. You know, if Prey is coming back and more Predator films and Alien Romulus looks to be doing good at the box office and people are liking it, then count me in to see them all fighting again. All right, guys, here we are getting up to my top five. And just as a word of warning again, some of these might buy hot takes to you. Some of you, you might disagree with me. Totally fine. I'm just warning you right now because I don't want people being like, oh my God, I cannot believe you believe that. I do. But understand, I'm never, I'm not the biggest Alien fan. I'm like a recent one. And some of these have changed a lot. Like, I've literally shifted this ranking so much, specifically just this top five. I've shifted it so much, but this is, like, where I really definitively feel. So, at my number five, Prometheus. You guys thought I was going to say Alien, didn't you? Uh, at my number five is Prometheus, though, and a lot of that comes down to me. I watched Prometheus twice this week because I originally, when I first saw this movie, which, fun fact, it was actually the first movie ever in the Alien franchise I'd ever seen. I didn't know it was an Alien movie going in. I wasn't really versed into the movie sphere. I just saw Ridley Scott, new sci-fi horror film. It looks cool. Let me go check it out. And when it ended up being like an actual taking place in this world with the Whalen Corp and stuff like that, I was like, oh, like I, I need to go check out Alien. And that's where it introduced me really much to the entire franchise. So without Prometheus, I don't know if I could say that I would have ever gotten really into the Alien franchise besides doing this YouTube channel. So thank you to Prometheus. And I think for me, like, I overall love Prometheus for a lot of what its aspects are trying to say and what a lot of it is trying to do, specifically in its answers and questions to humanity and us building up our world. And I think all those things are fascinating and really keep me locked into these characters and specifically this mythology of what they are establishing with the space engineers or the space jockeys or whatever you wanted to call them. And while in here, there are a lot of stupid choices that the characters make. There's also maybe certain things that feel a little bit more surface level than actually diving deeper into that. And that's where I feel like, yeah, it was nice that Ridley Scott made a movie under two hours. 
but I would have preferred that maybe this movie had an extra 20 minutes to just really marinate on certain sequences. Like it feels like we're going from like one guy turning into a zombie to like obliterating certain people on his cast to like another person, like getting an emergency C-section and this weird squid worm thing coming right out of her and all these different aspects of the movie again, feel a tad bit rushed. I like the panic inducing feeling of it all and how fast it needs to move to keep us intrigued. But some of it, I feel like I would have liked if it just marinated a tad bit better. And that is, is genuinely the only thing that honestly holds this film back from being a little bit higher on this list. I went back a lot and forth on my one through five and where I really wanted to establish something. And the, that is literally the only reason Prometheus is lower on the list is it's trying to do so much and so much of it I love. And I would say that I love Prometheus, but... Some of it does feel a tad bit glazed over or rushed over to where I would have liked to see a little bit more of certain moments and certain developments between characters. I move forward, I just want to say that I do think Michael Fassbender's David is probably one of the most intriguing characters in the Alien franchise. Absolutely love David and his entire progression through the entire Alien franchise. Then we get into my number four, and I'm not shitting you. For like the longest time, this was my number one Alien movie. Th this was the number one. And for a while, it was like this until most up recently. And it's wild to say this, but at my number four, it's Aliens. And I know for a lot of you, that is probably your number one or your number two. But there's a couple different things that like really stick out to me in Aliens and specifically what I look for now in this franchise and what I actually do want from it. I like the action heavy stuff of Aliens. And don't count me wrong. James Cameron is like one of my favorite filmmakers of all time. His Avatar films are some of my favorite worlds to ever go to and some of my favorite movie experiences. Terminator 2 is one of my favorite movies of all time. But there's something about Aliens 2 that... When I rewatched it twice this week, it like kind of just struck to me that I actually like more of the approach of the horror tone of like Prometheus and what Romulus did in the original Alien, of course. And I and I like the action. I think the action is so fun. Seeing this group of Marines go down and like just get fucking wrecked, specifically when they're in like that whole cave system and like all they can use is the fire. It, it's intense to say the least, but it keeps you on edge the entire way through. And Aliens for me is a worthy follow-up to the first Alien because of a lot of those ideas. I think it's actually, in a way, a perfect follow-up, going bigger and bolder than the last film because now you have this idea that there could be thousands of these xenomorphs. And even adding in the Alien Queen at the end, which was just such a fantastic set piece. And then you have the iconic scene of Ripley getting into the, the loading dock thing and just going ham. Like Things like that just excite me and get me excited and want to scream and cheer on the characters. And that's like what I enjoy joy about aliens but i miss some of the horror tone and i never thought in a million years i'd say that i never thought in a million years i'd say that aliens is better than alien because i was always really much on the reverse but there's something about that horror tone and that the scattering of the unknown to certain characters that really gripped me in terms of a lot of iconic scenes and iconic aspects and aliens for me when I'm looking at it and enjoying it, it's such an entertaining movie that does have a lot of smart moments, but it loses that lack because these Marines are able to just burst through and kill a lot. There are intense moments where they have to really like have their back to the wall and do the least amount of stuff that they can because of what they have to use to survive. But even then, they know that they can at least kill these things with bullets, and I think that takes away from some of the scariness of the franchise. Brings me up to my number three, and that is Alien Romulus, the brand new Alien movie. And as a full disclosure, I've only seen the movie once, but I can't stop thinking about it. And with my busy schedule and a lot of things going on in my life right now, just a lot of everlasting changing things that you'll hear about in a couple months, Alien Romulus is a movie that I really am craving to see again. I need to see it again. And it is definitely less of what I expected it to be, but I think that is a good thing. I love Fede Alvarez as a director, and I love how wild and big that he can go with his ideas, specifically with the Evil Dead remake and how gruesome and gnarly that movie was. And I was so happy to see that Alien Romulus kind of hones it back, makes him a little bit more tame, 
and tells an amalgamation of the entire Alien franchise. Like earlier when I was saying like, oh, you like this in your Alien things? Like some people like this, some people like this. And for me, I found that Alien Romulus had a little bit of aspects of every Alien film to date. The Prometheus and Covenant mythology, world building, and philosophical stuff, it's in this movie. You have the action heavy stuff of Aliens 2 and specifically in a couple different sequences. You have the unknowning you have the unknowingly dread of what is going on with the Xenomorph and the face huggers and making this crew feel scared from Alien and Alien 3. And then you have the weird and grotesque and just goes really out there. And that's what I really loved about this was the fact that it touched into each and every one of those things. And Fede really said, yeah, we appreciate everything that the Alien franchise has ever given to us. And the fact that this is set alone and I don't think it is needed to see anything else in the Alien franchise. I think it helps to at least see in the first film, but it's not needed. And the fact that it is standalone makes it feel like its own pocket of the universe in its really own fucked up way. Specifically, and if you haven't seen the movie, I'm just going to say, The Baby, <laughs> that, that's all I'll say, The Baby, which I did not know what they were going there, and they went there, and it kind of just made me sit there going, Oh my fucking God, they're going there. Every single second of that reveal, the more and more that got revealed about it, the more and more gnarly and twisted and fucked up it got. Like for me, that last 30 minutes is like full on Fetty Alvarez. And I would be curious to see what a sequel can do in showcasing something more like that even more. So it even made me feel like I was watching a Dead Space movie, which if you've ever played the video game, I love Dead Space and I think that would have just pulled it off perfectly. For me, I was blown away by the picture. I didn't grow up with the Alien franchise and I was just excited to kind of jump back into here and enjoy something new and for me Romulus was kind of like just something I instantly fell in love with I also instantly fell in love with how the movie looks it's absolutely gorgeous I think this is Fede Alvarez's best movie today and I also really like the characters not saying that like they're the the strongest most written characters but like the performances bar none that Fede gets from his performance is fantastic especially Kaylee Spaney and David Johnson who I think both are just so good in here and their dynamic is just something that you absolutely get locked into you want to cheer on to survive yeah I love Alien Romulus. Yeah, two acts of it kind of feel a little bit similar to most Alien movies, but for the most part, it is that love letter. And there is one thing with one character in here that is my only issue of the movie. I get why they did it. I like the idea. I think it would have been better if David was there, though. I'll just leave it at that. Now we get up to my top two, and again, brace yourself for a hot take. Um, my number two is Alien. What did you say? What the fuck did you just say? I'm sure I just lost a shit ton of you. If I haven't already lost you, I'm sure you're already commenting down below how stupid my ranking is. And, and that's okay to feel. Totally fine to feel. That's why I love this franchise, because it gets so weird and wacky, and so many of us have different opinions. But Alien is a classic. And if you told me, and I, I'll say this, it is a better made movie than the my number one. It is a better made movie than my number one. That, that That's just the truth. But I did not grow up with Alien. I did not. I don't have like a whole beloved hold into it. And I don't. I've never thought the movie was like all that scary. I think some of the dread and the unknowingly stuff really like lacks me in. And then like, of course, like the, tw the twist of like one of the crew members being an android is like a huge thing. And then like Ripley is just such an instantly easy character to relate to. But I, I like some other things in Alien franchises that we'll talk a little bit more about in a second, but I know I'm trying to defend myself, but I love this movie, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that I can finally say that I love it because this last rewatch really was the thing that propelled it forward for me because Alien has always been one of those movies that I've called a little bit overrated. I don't really get the hype. I like that it's a horror. I like the creature design. I like some of the characters, and I like what they were trying to do in the space station, but I've just always felt it was a tad bit boring. And it was more of a movie that I appreciated. And then something about this rewatch, which was probably like the third or fourth time I'd ever watched this movie, I really just kind of gave myself to the film. And I fell in love with it. And from watching, I, I'm not joking, I watched almost every Alien film in one day. From watching the first Alien and watching almost every single one of them in one day, it made me always go back and think about the first one. And while after that rewatch, I had more than just appreciated it, I could fully say that I loved it. 
my ranking shifted so much because it was originally at my number four. And as I kept watching the franchise, it just kept moving up and up and up until it finally got to my second spot. And it really did go in between my number one and two. Some of me wanted to stick with my heart and my gut and what I felt was my favorite in the franchise. But for me, what Alien was able to pull off is just an undoubted bull feast. It is a classic horror movie that will never be denied to anyone. And I fully understand that. Sigourney Weaver is phenomenal in here. Hurt is also great. I'm scared as well, amazing. The entire cast is so great in here. The the unknowingly dread and bringing the xenomorph and then the chest burster happening, all those certain things just contain such uneasy. And eventually, if and when I ever have a kid in my life and a child, I will want to show them this movie, like how my dad used to show me some old school horror movies back in the day that used to scare the shit out of me because those are like the unknowing things and the practical effects really hold this film up to today. It is a beautifully created horror movie that I just, I think if I would have seen it as a kid and I would have had that nostalgic aspect, I think a lot of this film would have hit a little bit harder for me, but I got to go with my gut on what my number one is and my number one is Alien Covenant. What are they, vegetables or... Fruit. <clears throat> and what does that make? Ketchup. <laughs> oh, brother, this guy stinks! Hey, hey, funny guy! I got a joke for you! What smells rotten and puts people to sleep? Um, not just gas? No! Your act! I already know, again, a lot of people do not like. I know a lot of people didn't like Prometheus and a lot of people didn't like the Covenant and a lot of people just don't like that they actually touched in to where the Xenomorphs came from. I'm not saying that like I ever thought I would want to know that, but when you give me the answer to that, it never pissed me off to any sort of extent on on knowing that. Some days like I, I like really like when I hear people like saying how much they hate Covenant and how much they shit on this movie, I, like sometimes I think am I just fucking crazy? And you might be thinking that I am fucking crazy. I know I am in the minority, but God, I really think this movie's perfect. I think the movie just rips in so many ways. Yes, and I will say this, there are paper thin characters just like Prometheus, and as well, very, very stupid decisions in this. Like, when Billy Crudup goes and he's like, David, I need you to tell me everything that's going on, and he's like, follow me, and he's like, look at this thing, it's like, no. David was just playing around with the Neomorph. You ain't gonna, you should not look in that egg, and he did, and of course, that was the worst decision he possibly could have ever made, but there's decisions like that I I fully, it doesn't bother me, I just enjoy it, because... Alien Covenant for me is like one part Prometheus sequel, one part prequel to Alien. And in a lot of ways, it's an homage to a love letter to a lot of different horror things that Ridley Scott has touched on with, of course, an alien, but also just horror in general, but also the philosophical and mythology of the xenomorphs and everything in this universe that's now captured into this movie, I found to just be grand. Do I love that they killed off Shaw? No, but it never really bothers me because of how much to the extent that we get a more of David, which I said earlier on in this video, how much I love the character of David. Michael Fassbender does an amazing job playing him. But also now that you have this other character named Walter, and I have this back and forth between them, there's a great idealistic a parallel to that. Prometheus had these parallels between the space engineers, humanity, and of course, David himself and AI. And in this one, it does show that parallel once again, specifically humans, AI, and now the alien. It has that perfect mix of horror and drama for me. And so many different things in here, specifically the dread of the unknown, really get captured in here and bring back that same feeling that I've loved in a lot of the horror installments within the Alien franchise. The fact that this crew has no idea how to deal with any of this, how they're so unprepared, you can just feel that in their voices, in the trembling. And like, I know a lot of people talk shit about the med bay sequence, but I absolutely love it. Like the second that thing pops out and she's locked in there and I know they slip on the blood, that doesn't really piss me off because the... Like every time I've seen that sequence, I sit there in just awe, disgust, and disturbed, even though I've seen it so many different times before, of how it's pulled off and how I'm trying to feel like, how are they feeling in that situation? How they're so just on edge and not knowing what this thing is and what it's doing and how it kills one of them and then jumps over to the other one and it just, it's a fantastic sequence.
whole film has that, specifically even in the wheat field when they're all out there and then there's like, what, two Neomorphs just running around and they just start popping out them with the bullets. It's very intense. I honestly think this is Scott's top tier direction, specifically elevating the horror moments for this all and really much showing the worst moments of someone's life that could possibly be happening in the worst scenario on some deserted planet. That's where I felt that this franchise is the scariest is when they give us a crew that are completely unprepared and do not know what they are facing and then jumping all over to david seeing the flashback of how he kills all the engineers seeing his flashback and how it's all that philosophical aspects of prometheus and asking about the questions of creation i loved it Covenant literally just nails everything and more that I wanted from the Alien franchise, and it nails everything that I've expected and things that I personally like as a viewer of film. I'm a huge proponent of world building and mythology, and if you deliver that very well into a movie and specifically execute it in your sequel on more of an extent, then I am more likely to love what you have to say. And if you're able to all accomplish that while at the same time honoring the legacy of Alien within the horror tone, then yeah, I absolutely would love your movie. And that's why I think Alien Covenant is one of my personal favorites from Ridley Scott. And I also love what he just accomplished here. He is the original director of Alien. And I'm happy that he was able to make Alien Covenant. And it makes me sad that he never got to make the sequel to this one. But maybe hopefully in the future we'll see new things come from that. I'm just happy that we have a movie like this that I can latch on to. And I think as film fans, we should just be happy that if someone, if you're so beloved of a franchise that no matter which movie in this franchise you love, if you love them all, whether you hate them all or maybe just like one of them, we should be appreciative that someone in that franchise likes it. Even if you completely disagree with them, which I'm sure many of you guys are. That's just my thoughts. Alien Covenant's my favorite. I still love the original Alien, guys. I, I still do. But this is where I'm at. I, I'm so happy to say I'm a huge Alien fan now. Uh, and I look forward to seeing whatever they bring out into the future. So thank you so much again for watching. And of course, until next time, stay classy. Stay classy.